Welcome to part two of our 2015 motoring preview. So far, we've looked at everything from supercars to tiny urban runabouts, hatchbacks, large and small, and segment busting crossovers. But there's a long list still to come. We'll start off with some MPVs and SUVs. BMW kicks off its local new model offensive with the 2 Series Active Tourer, a compact MPV that happens to be the first ever front-wheel drive BMW. It shares its underpinnings with the latest Mini and combines a compact footprint with space and comfort. Sales start in February. The quirky Citroen C4 Cactus offers a more individual alternative to normal compact hatchbacks. Short overhangs make it look smaller than it is, while air bump protective panels on the doors add further interest. It's powered by a choice of three-cylinder petrol engines and is due to arrive before mid-year. BMW's much-anticipated i3 electric car finally arrives in March, a year later than expected. It breaks new ground on many levels, both for the brand and modern motoring, and should be the first electric car to make a real impact here, despite luxury car pricing and ESCOM's load shedding. The Opel Mokka will be aiming for a slice of the small SUV segment when it's launched here in May. It goes up against the likes of the Peugeot 2008, the Suzuki SX4 and Ford's Eco Sport, and will share some engines with the next generation Opel Corsa, including a 1400cc turbo petrol. Staying with small and versatile cars, the Fiat 500X is due in the second half of the year. Based on the 500L but with a measure of all-terrain talent, the 500X is another small SUV contender set to benefit from the buying down trend. Expect 1400 turbo and 1600 normally aspirated engines linked to funky interiors. The Renegade is Jeep's take on the 500X formula and this one places the focus more firmly on off-road talent in line with the brand's all-terrain heritage. The first Jeep to be built in Italy, it comes in 4x2 and 4x4 versions with a range of engines including a 2.4 litre 136 kilowatt power plant for the flagship Trailhawk. There's no low range but clever electronics promise to ensure that the Renegade will live up to go anywhere expectations. It's due in the second half of the year. And here's another small crossover, this time from Renault. The Capture is based on the Renault Clio platform, but has a taller stance and a roomier SUV-style cabin with a focus on style and practicality. Engines are likely to mirror the Clio's current three-cylinder offering, but they could be a turbo diesel too. The CX-3 is Mazda's take on the compact SUV formula and is based on the latest generation Mazda 3 platform. To be offered in front-wheel drive and four-wheel drive versions, the CX-3 will be taking on the Nissan Qashqai, the Kia Sportage, Hyundai's iX35 and the Ford Cougar in what has become a crowded and competitive segment. It's due in October. Suzuki's Grand Vitara is also due for replacement with an all-new model this year. The newcomer won't offer the current model's low-range transmission, but will use clever electronics to augment its all-wheel drive system. The new Grand Vitara will also be lighter and more economical. It should arrive later this year. One of the most eagerly awaited SUV launches is that of the all-new Volvo XC90, which is expected in South Africa around mid-year. The Scandinavian oozes minimalist style and bristles with technology, much of it aimed at occupant safety. 
power comes from Volvo's new four-cylinder turbo petrol and turbo diesel engines. Another much-anticipated arrival is that of the all-new Audi Q7, which made its global debut at the Detroit Motor Show a few weeks ago. Much lighter and more economical, with trick instrumentation and loads of tech, the new Q7 is slightly smaller than the current model, but still offers more interior space. A supercharged 3-litre V6 petrol and a 3-litre turbo diesel are the initial engine offerings, with more to follow. It should arrive in South Africa in the second half of the year. BMW will be releasing M versions of its new generation X6 as well as the latest X5 before mid-year. These high-performance sports activity vehicles may be large and heavy, but the M treatment ensures that they feel more like sports cars than SUVs. The drivetrain employs an adapted version of the M5 sedan's Turbo V8, good for 423 kilowatts, but linked to all-wheel drive. The new generation Volkswagen Passat is one of several new sedans set for local launch. Competing in the D segment, the latest Passat looks regal and luxurious and is said to set high standards of comfort and refinement. The estate version won't be offered here. Jaguar has high hopes for its new compact premium sedan, which should boost the brand's sales volume significantly. Aimed squarely at the BMW 3 Series, Mercedes-Benz C-Class and Audi A4 category, the XE gets an all-aluminium construction and a new generation of high-tech four-cylinder engines combined with state-of-the-art interior appointments. It's due in South Africa towards the end of the year, with a debut at the Johannesburg International Motor Show in October, the most likely timing. Ford returns to the medium sedan segment with a large and sophisticated model badged the Fusion, although it will retain the Mondeo nomenclature in Europe. The Fusion is said to be offered with a choice of three engines, including a 1.5-litre EcoBoost and three trim levels. It goes on sale later this month. The new Audi TT is another early arrival on our shores, with the newcomer due for launch in February. The third generation TT is edgier and more aggressive than before, with a specific focus on driver appeal and engaging road manners. It's also the first Audi fitted with the brand's new TFT instrument display. The 2-litre TFSI engine now delivers 169 kilowatts. A Roadster version comes later, as do more powerful TTS models. Arguably one of the most evocative badges in the sports car world returns with the launch of the all-new Ford Mustang towards the end of the year. The new car is thoroughly modern inside and out, including the choice of a 2.3-litre EcoBoost engine alongside the traditional V8. The hardtop comes first with a convertible due in 2016. The Lexus RCF is the top-line performance version of the new RC Coupe due for launch in South Africa this year. The two-door looks particularly aggressive in RCF guise, which is powered by a 348-kilowatt 5-litre V8 and has the BMW M4 marked as its closest rival. The Mazda MX-5 is the car that started the small roadster revival back in the 1980s and several generations later it's still a purest driving machine. An all-new MX-5 will make its global debut in 2015 and should reach South Africa by year-end. The emphasis remains on wieldy handling, low weight and driver engagement. Power will come from Mazda's 125 kilowatt Sky Active 2-litre petrol engine. Taking on BMW's M3 will be the new generation Mercedes-Benz C63 AMG, offered in two versions, a standard 350 kilowatt model and an S version with another 25 kilowatt on top. The 0 to 100 sprint time is four seconds dead in the case of the latter. Expected in local showrooms before mid-year. 
Our 2015 preview has given us an idea of what to expect on the roads in the year to come, and it's pretty obvious that South Africans are in for another cracker year of new cars and new technologies. With enhanced safety, improved automation and increased efficiency, the obvious themes. All of which made us wonder what a show in 2021 might look like, by which time, of course, we'll be on episode 600. So, here are some of our predictions. An area of continuous development in the automotive world is that of lighting, with car makers scurrying to provide brighter, better and more focused illumination for nighttime driving. Audi's Matrix light system is one of several that provides optimized lighting without blinding oncoming traffic. But in 2021, this should be commonplace, with high-end cars opting for even more sophisticated laser lighting. One of the biggest buzzwords in automotive research and development at present is the concept of autonomous driving, which will allow cars of the future to effectively drive themselves while their occupants work or relax on board. The Mercedes-Benz F015 research vehicle is a design study seeking to preview what the luxury autonomous car of the future may look like. Key features include a spacious interior, intelligent connectivity and a streamlined aerodynamic exterior. The bold front and rear lighting and acoustic systems allow the car to interact with its surroundings effectively. Does this signal the end of motoring as we know it? Only the future will tell. There's still no clear answer to alternative energy sources for cars, but Honda's extensive research in fuel cell technology has demonstrated that these cars, which are able to transform hydrogen into electricity, can be viable. The latest Honda FC EV has more compact fuel cell stacks and a 480 kilometer range. Audi's prologue may just be a concept, but its sleek, low-slung lines hint at Audi's take on big car design of the future, with a body created from a mix of aluminium and high tensile steel. Of course, Quattro all-wheel drive is standard, assisted by four-wheel steering, while the interior features a fascia comprised entirely of touchscreen displays. Could the prologue be the new A10? We think so, and it will arrive before 2021.